Oh my god. Look at that. Pocket watch. And why is that crazy? I'm transitioning from a spot I was leaving and I just came across this little flat spot in the middle of nowhere and went, hmm, let me throw the detector on. And boom. Let's swing here for a few and see what happens. Oh yeah, stuff everywhere. It's starting to rain. Wow, that's old. Huh. Geez, I wonder if I'm sitting on top of a footprint. So I'm out and about and I'm filming another video and I'm catching up with you guys because I did not plan on digging right now here at this spot. Filmed another video, walking through the woods, see this location. Turn the machine on, pocket watch, right? So how we're gonna run this episode, because I'm trying to get out of here because of the rain, but I've got a long way to go. I'm gonna see how much stuff I can dig. Well, I don't know how long I have. It's spitting on me and I'm sure it's gonna rain. It's a sewing button. I thought it was gonna be a wheat penny or something. But I have rain coming in, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave, you guys hold on, and I'll be back when it's not raining. And we'll see what this is. Logger's landing, cabin site. I don't know, the ground is loaded with stuff though. Alright, be right back. And I'm back. Well, hey everybody, it's a couple days later. It's not raining. And I cannot believe how bad of a hike up it is in here. 50 minutes through just the most obnoxious terrain. So let's get down to the bottom of what this site was. Flat, footprint, lots of signals, in the middle of nothing. So I'm gonna start out where that pocket watch was because why not, right? Listen to that. Oh, that's mid 60s. So I was thinking about over the past day or so about this location and how I found it at random. Random because of where I'm hiking, but it really makes sense when I looked in that there's no ferns or uh, anything else besides trees growing. The ground is so hard packed from whatever was here, all the activity, that it makes it difficult for that stuff to grow. And it looks like we got a little tin. There is logic to why it stood out, besides being flat. I don't see any. Well, there's a little text, but things beat. All right. Well, so far, no different of a report than most sites. Lots of these shotgun shells. Old ones, but lots of them. Well, I've been here 15 minutes. Everything sounds like this. And generally turns out to be a shotgun shell. That's peaking a bit higher, but I don't know. Nail. And then it disappears because there's so much stuff in there, just disturbing it. The signal degrades to all the residuals of metal. All right. Wow. Sounds big.
It's aluminum. It's just loaded with junk. Huh. Well, as you can imagine, the hopes and thoughts are somebody dropped coins here. If there's any place we, you know, usually find silver out in the woods, it's places like this. But there's just so much junk and trash that, uh, you know, I'm spending so much time just getting signals out of the ground. I ain't giving up, but I'm quite surprised nothing's popped out easily. I just stumbled upon a surface find, a Keene, New Hampshire bottle, soda. Judging by the looks of it, it's I don't know, early 1900s, maybe a hundred years old. So that's kind of cool, and kind of what I'm figuring for the site, judging by the shotgun shells and such. Another sew on button. Boy, those babies ring up loud, huh? Well, at least good numbers. Well, surprisingly enough, I can't pull anything out of there or here. Um, it's just trash. A million shotgun shells and tins, sardines tobacco whatever so as you see by the wall I'm sitting on here I'm on a colonial farm that's how I found this coming back from another cellar hole being that I have a 50 minute walk and several big squares to go through I'm just gonna take you guys with me we're gonna explore on the way out and who knows maybe we'll dumb luck another site like this that pocket watch was total dumb luck. That day I turned my machine on and went weep and it was right there. So fortunate for that. All right, let's head off into the unknown. So we're leaving the farm on the hill. Excuse me, but you can see the rock wall up there all logged on that side not logged on this side but it's quite the down which I know I've got to go down the entire way but we'll see if there's anything in this square pretty rugged so all I'm doing is like I said the other day, I'm taking the path of least resistance because I don't know what's out here. That's a pretty big hole. I don't see any rocks. Judging by what I'm standing in, I highly doubt it's a cellar hole, but let's turn the machine on and see what it sounds like. Sounds like nail to me. That's interesting. There's no doubt walking around this that it's man-made. It just doesn't fit anything else out here terrain-wise. And then as usual, you got the hole and then all the soil that came out. It's square and it's too large to be from a tree. You know, you don't know what people were digging for out here over the last almost 300 years. Could have been granite. Somebody could have started to dig a hole here. Sell a hole that is. But let's see what kind of nail we got. 
hard to say, but it's definitely a nail. All the way down here, I'm on the... So, uh, when I re-looked the topos, it's 1,800 feet up there, and I'm probably a third of the way down. So I'm just, you know, in an odd spot. Let's see if there's anything else around this thing. Well, I went around a few times in all metal mode to give me the depth, but you look at that walking up. And it definitely, definitely isn't normal. All right, well, I'm gonna keep heading down through this, I guess. Who knows what else we'll find. Sorry, I have to stop when I hear things. Completely dry. A couple small pools down there, but geez, can you imagine what this is like in the springtime. Well, that's one thing about where we live. Even on the side of a terrible mountain, keep going and you'll find a rock wall. Completely closing in. All that. That's weird, I see a blue down there, like tarp. That tarp? Oh, it's an inflatable mattress. Oh, that's a good place for it. Jeez, I'm not even that close to the road either. Well, you never know. Oh, look at this. As I get more down the hill, closer to the uh, road that's still in use, concrete. This is a foundation up here. Well, stacked rocks, little parking area, it's flat. You can hear the traffic. I'm not that far from the road now, but it's amazing how many of these old cabin sites there are sprinkled through the woods of New Hampshire. All right, let's swing here. Oh, it can't be good bubble jacket, right? Uh, as I get down here from the camp, there's all kinds of intersecting walls. I can't tell if this is a chunk of the Colonial Road or what, it just, it just comes over here to this uh, mess of topography. This is amazing how much stuff there is land-wise out here. Oh, yes. I can't believe I just found this. And I guess me taking the time to snoop around this old camp to look for colonial stuff paid off. It's a hame knob. Oh man, I haven't dug one of these in years, like five or six. Beautiful. End of the dig find. Yeah, I think the last time I found one of these I was with FG. So this is odd. The old, the new road's out there. I thought this was the old road coming in, but it just, it just goes into nothing. Maybe there was a structure or something right here. I don't know, but boy, I'm glad I dug that. The numbers are too high to be can. All right. Well, everybody, that's it. What a day. What an amazing amount of different layers of time out here. 
I thought for sure I would swing over a wheat penny or something up that newer foundation. But this little strip of wall goes into nothing and there's a ham knob. So you're not going to know until you pop your head in and take a look. Thanks for joining me and get out of here bugs. We'll see you all next time. Till then, enjoy your not Thursday.